Okay, I started. <coughs> we built uh, buildings, we built other technologies that create additional problems, and we solve those additional problems with additional technologies and so on. So that's what we call civilization. We create problems, we solve those problems using technologies, then we create other problems, then solve those. For what reason? To have better living position. History of science and history of technology are related. History of tech, when we say history of technology, it's more related to tools. From the hammer, uh, from the wheel, etc. Pumps. So invention of tools and techniques, and it's one of the categories of world history. Technology refers to methods ranging from as simple as stone tools to complex genetic engineering and information technology tools since 1980s and 90s from uh, from the beginning of the 20th century from 1900 uh, technology has advanced very rapidly but after 1980s and 90s in the previous class we have seen the how silicon technology improved after 1980s it is taken off with an increased speed. The rate of change is much greater after 1980s. So we talked about this a little bit. What was being taken away? What was known? How was it known? For what purpose? And who were they? Who did what? It's not based. It is not simple memorization. It is. Uh, it is kind of happiness. Knowing certain things makes you happy. It should make you happy. Uh, other than being happy, it may not have additional effect. It will make you clever. It will make you able to talk in certain circumstances a little better. You will have some ability to overcome problems in real life. If you know, if you learn how they did in the past, not one-to-one -one correspondence, but in terms of thinking style, uh, you will have additional room in your brains. And legacies, remnants, and remaining things will be studied. This guy is named as Vanilla Bush. Uh, This guy says, science can be effective in the national welfare only as a member of team, whether the conditions be peace or war. But without scientific progress, no amount of achievement in other directions can issue, ensure our health, prosperity, and security as a nation in the modern world. Where? In the United States, of course, not in Turkey. Uh, this guy is electrical engineer from I think from MIT, but later uh, he was the dean of engineering faculty in MIT. Uh, he had a lot of inventions, and most famously, he was the leader of uh, Manhattan Project, where Richard Feynman worked. This guy, this guy was the 
administrative lead, so like president of the project. And he was the scientific advisor of President, US President Eisenhower in the, in the war time, in the Second World War. And he, led the, he was the guy who led the atomic bomb. And there are videos of him talking about whether the atomic bomb was necessary or not, whether the atomic bomb was worked as expected and did its job because his argument was if they didn't explode atomic bomb, there will be more people to die, much more people to die because war, not, war wasn't going to end. Uh, so, if you are interested, you can watch his video as well. Uh, he was the founder of American Tubitak, so named as National Science National Science Foundation. So he was the founder of National Science Foundation. Before him, there was no structured science scientific. Uh, 1945. Before him, there was no scientific structured uh, organizations that support science to promote technology coming after that. Uh, there was no government money paid to scientific development before him, so he was the founder of that. And furthermore, you might be interested, he was the father of World Wide Web. In 19, 1946 article, he envisioned a machine uh, that has buttons on it and in the like for the library, when you are viewing a microfilm in the library, you press the button related to in the microfilm, there are letters, links, there are letters. When you press that button, corresponding button, Another one comes up, which is referred in the previous microfilm. So he created the notion of links and he envisioned that kind of machine can be used in the library. So all people uh, today refer him to uh, as father of World Wide Web. In the same article, uh, he also has a camera mounted on top of the head for the future. And that camera will see what's around and interpret that to the human. So it will augment, augment the, he used the word augment for the augmented reality. Uh, it's going to augment the capability of the human by processing the knowledge uh, through the machine, 1946 article. <clears throat> the, who, who invented mouse? <laughs> the guy named, uh, the guy's name is Douglas Engelbart, uh, invented the mouse, 1964, I think. Uh, he was, the reader, he was not student, but reader of one of our books a lot. He was affected from him. And one of the things that Douglas Engelbart was done was creation of personal computing. He created a personal computer in 1964. He, he demoed it uh, before him, before Douglas Engelbart. Uh, computers were thought to be machines for big rooms. It was still big, but used by a single person. Not like a system room, OK? Anyhow. So the science came up pretty much in Mesopotamia. 
Egypt early times. Egypt, very early times. China, later times, Greeks, Romans, and then European, Europe and America. Uh, the reason of development is to have two parts. One, explain the question of why, why we are here, what is those, what are those stars, what is happening to the world, what is day and night, okay, what is fire, etc. Those kind of, what is death, what is human body, why we, why do we age, okay? Those questions require move us to explain nature phenomena. Second part is the exploit. So more technological things to be able to use it, to be able to benefit from it. Such as in the in the Egyptian times, irrigation of the water, of the land by water. Uh, or in China, the fireworks and the mathematical things. Since uh, most Greek we have two Greek professors in the department. One is Turkish Greek, one is Greek Greek. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, so most Greek uh, scientists in that time uh, were in Anatolia, not in today's Greece. Some of them are there, but most of them are in Turkish side. Uh, they were very good in mathematics. I'm making fun of them because since the region is very easy to live and very uh, good climate, lot of fruits and vegetables, okay, not not big right. difficulties to live. So mathematical science and philosophy was very good in those days. <clears throat> For example, Europe was cold, days were limited, Africa was too hot, and China similarly. So the living is very easy in Anatolia, in Western Anatolia, so mathematics and philosophy developed a lot. <clears throat> Aristotle, for example, 300 BC, he invented the term technology, technology. He said technology. Since they are not hungry, they think a lot. Uh, in in the third year, you will have an operating systems course. In the operating systems course, there is a problem, technical problem called as dining philosophers. Philosopher has three uh, states. Think, eat, and select what to eat. Anyhow, so uh, Aristotle said there is theoretical science, there is practical science, and there is application part. Practical science is about measurements, learning, etc. Theoretical science is taking derivatives. They might be related. Derivative has a counterpart in physical world, but it's on paper. So it's theoretical science. Practical science is the measure about the measurements and the productive science, which is technology. This is from 1920s. We first used our hand, then X is invented, Malta. Then we create more problems with the X. Those more problems need to be solved, and then additional machines to solve that problem. Those problems. Then the disturbance in environment increased. Additional problems to solve those additional pro additional problems. You create additional machines. So it goes in the loop until until industrial revolution. I think. Uh, people only try to 
work on two things. One, to feed themselves in a proper way and make children. Two, uh, to pray and exploit religious uh, practices, like to build big buildings for praying. Uh, so they work to make sacrificial places, uh, mosques and other things. So one part goes into religious affairs. Additional part is uh, Egyptian pyramids, for example, all, all for religious, religious actions. The second part is for feeding themselves. <clears throat> Then, after, I think after the Renaissance in 1500s, people started to uh, not only feed themselves, but also uh, religious practices, but also improve their conditions, improve their thinking conditions, improve their education, improve their lifestyle, etc. For example, travel tourism, etc. So traveling becomes a positive thing. Uh, watching TV, for example, is something. Eating different things, not only for uh, providing, uh, not only for suppressing hunger, but al also for eating better things, better education, better housing, pleasure, more pleasure. So these increased. So the, this guy is Edison. Edison is a good guy. Uh, the, the purpose of technology is to increase the quality of life, basically. As I said, after 1500, uh, the notion of person is invented. Not invented, but came up. Before that, there was no person important. Person was not important. The, the ideas and the nations were important. For that reason, there were a lot of killings because human life was not that important. But today, for better living spaces, better nutrition, better enjoyment, better education, uh, we use technology and science to explain things and to exploit nature. There is a triangle called, called Maslow Triangle. How many of you heard Maslow Triangle before? OK, thank you. In the Maslow Triangle, there is a triangle at the bottom. Uh, do I have it? No, I don't. At the bottom, uh, there are primitive needs such as housing and the food, etc. As you go on the top, there are more theoretical and let me show it. <coughs> fulfillment kind of self fulfillment issues. Maybe you can tell where you are at the moment. Yurt yurt diye şey yapıyoruz ya. So at the bottom there are physiological needs, then there is safety needs, housing, etc. Then belonging and love, esteem, cognitive needs, aesthetic needs. This is better. This is more beautiful, so I, I need that for the car, for example. 
self-actualization. Uh, I'm able to do so certain things. I'm able to help and transcendence. Uh, your your vision is like you're satisfied from yourself. Maslow says, uh, before you fulfill the bottom layer, you cannot go to the upper layer. For example, you cannot uh, talk about city planning and pleasure design of the campus if the people has no house. You have to have the house, you have to feed them. They don't have to be hungry in order to be able to talk cognitive needs and aesthetic. Okay. So each layer must be fulfilled before others. Of course, there are some passings, but basically you have to provide uh, bottom from bottom to top. Uh. Okay. Edison has the first organized research lab in the world. Organized research lab before. It's very early. It's before National Science Foundation. And our brain is strong, able to learn. It is not as strong as 30 billion transistors, but it is strong. It has limits. And the problem is we get older and we die. Uh, it looks very distant when you are at that age. You, you, you feel that you have a lot of life on your, in your front. But as you age, you realize that there is not much time left. So at the end you die. So accumulation of information on one brain is not the solution. Transfer of transfer of abilities in the animals, for example, uh, is stimulated by evolution. Those who can do it lived with higher probability and then it is included in genetical norm, such as cats eat their dead babies. Did you see that? in order to survive <clears throat> because they are feeding the other babies. Uh, they don't think about it, they just do it. So it is it is learned through the millions of years. <clears throat> but in order to teach something to another person, your son, you need to show it. Okay. And the apprenticeship, Chiraklik in Turkish, is that apprenticeship is the world's hundreds, not hundreds, thousands of years of history. Apprenticeship is the way of transferring knowledge to generations until the invention of text with Sumerians, they were able to do things. Unfortunately, most written things in those days are not technical things, mostly uh, kings sayings or uh, trade trade documents, deeds, etc. Some of them are novels, some of them are similar things, but scientific information was not that common in Sumerians. They were started, I think, in, uh, with Egyptians. In Egyptian hieroglyphs, there are some scientific information. Mm. 
about what they are doing and numbers, etc. So that that information is transferred to people of next generation. In the older days, in Europe and in Ottoman times and Islamic times and in China, most uh, jobs were inherited from the father. Because father was carpenter, children was apprentice in the house because people were not working in the shops. Everybody was working in the house. So the children were apprentices. Children were apprentices and then uh, they were learning what they were told, what they see. That was the limitation. By writing, this is Egyptian, by writing uh, an invention of the alphabet, after a long history of mankind, finally they invented alphabet, some kind of alphabet popped up. Uh, then they start to store information. Therefore, they started to collect. Sıkım yiyorsunuz değil mi? Anlıyorsunuz da. Tiyatro yapmayalım yani. Uh, okay. As they started writing, uh, first China. China was very early. Uh, there were two types of men, let's say men or women, in the world. One in Africa, Homo sapiens. The other one is Neanderthal men, which was in Asia. Uh, Neanderthal was, Neanderthals were shorter but bigger. Homo sapiens was taller, probably black, uh, and more intelligent, they say, but not sure. So I, probably more, more and more Chinese people were descendants of Neanderthals, and that's why the civilization in Chinese area, South China, was started early, just like the civilizations in Mesopotamia and Africa and Northern Africa, in the green parts, uh, were started early, not in Europe, for example, because it was empty. Um, therefore, China, Central Asia, China, uh, Egypt, Arabs and Middle East, was the center of the civilizations. And most early scientific knowledge uh, were accumulated in that region, in those regions. Then, since writing was quite improved after invention of the paper, Sumerians were good, but they were writing on clay tablets, so it wasn't well preserved. Uh, paper things were uh, important. So in those late days, the dri drive of the science was uh, dependent on three things. One, are the rich people. If you are so rich, 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 you think about why is the moon is moving that direction? What is the moon? Or how do I take water from the river? Etc. Because you are rich. You think about in the Maslow hierarchy, you think about it and you, you become uh, inventor. So in the in the early years, 
most inventors are rich people or rich people's friends or uh, their personal. They support intelligent guys. OK, let's do it, etc. In not directly related, but in Europe, in the universe, when the universities started to establish, there were there were small kingdoms, 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 such as Bavaria Kingdom, uh, Köln Kingdom, the Genoa Kingdom, etc. Uh, each kingdom, for for fun and for uh, for advertisement, they built universities. And among them, there was a race whose university is bigger. OK, because they are rich, they support universities, different kings. So that was the driving motivation in Germany's early time universities. <coughs> Second thing is army. Oh, oops, sorry. Number on there. Second <clears throat> thing is army. In order to be able to kill the other side, you need to Don't do it. <coughs> so they collect money from the public. Monks, priests, they all collect money from the public and they work in different places, either in monastery, or in madrasa or in monk's place, etc. And they think. Among them, there are genius people as well. Those genius people started to think about more different things, such as movement of stars, flow, gravity, etc. How to fly like a bird. So a lot of priests from any religion, since they don't have the problem of working for a living because other people bring money to them, they have ability to uh, think in additional time and work. Therefore, a lot of scientific knowledge and technological advancement came from religious people, religious monks and peoples. Uh, organized people because they have freedom of thinking in their in their environment, of course, and they don't have problems with living. Furthermore, the things related to time, calendars, okay, they are all organized by religious people to collect taxes organize uh, public to celebrate certain days, etc. So they are very good in calendar working. And actually, what we use today is today's calendar is invented by monks. 365 days and 12 months, etc. <clears throat> Then 
Gutenberg is the key part printing. Before printing revolution, only handwriting was possible. And that was actually quite important. And there were people who was named as copiers. They were copying the original book. For example, you write a book, you hire 10 copier people. Those 10 copier people copy your, your writings. So it makes 11. Then they copy again. So it's like manual printing. In the older days, books about medicine and other kinds of science was distributed by handwriting. But the, with the printing revolution is quite different. I'm going to talk about it later. It is the same year with what in Turkey? Orta çağın kapanışı, yeni çağın başlangıcı hangi olayla? Ne? Başka? Gutenberg. So, although we say Eastern Western Rome Empire breakdown, the, the bigger part is the printing press. It's actual. Yes. With the printing press, not only the scientific knowledge, not only the scientific knowledge expanded, but also social knowledge is expanded. People started to learn uh, reading and writing. By the time they uh, arrived, 17, 1750, okay? Literacy rate in Germany was 70%. So there were schools, etc. 70%. In the previous times, there were localized uh, reading and writing uh, schools. For example, it was very interest interesting that before Istanbul was taken in, in Byzantium times, elementary education was obligatory. All children must go to school. Uh, until, until Latin invasion, Italians invaded Istanbul in 1204. Okay. In, in 1204, Istanbul was demolished. Everything was taken to Italy. Uh, probably you didn't know this, did you? Anybody know about? Okay, one guy knows. Two. So it is it is raised by Italians, uh, Latins, and the prosperity of Istanbul was accepted from 100. It was from 100 to 10. 12 or 4. Why am I saying that? Because the good times of Byzantium Empire was up to that part. Later, probably there were schools were also demolished and scholars were moved to Europe or Asia. After the printing revolution, uh, 1500s, in 1665, First scientific journal in the world, in England, by Royal Society, Royal Society of Science. Everything was royal in England. Royal Society of Science. Uh, it was only one journal. I mean, one periodical journal. Inside. There were medicine, engineering, social sciences, everything was in one journal, like Bilim and Technik, like But it was a refereed journal. It was with the editorial board, 
there was a review process, etc. So not all the texts were accepted. Uh, that's 1665. Uh, it was very important for knowledge accumulation and documentation and sharing. It was printed and distributed. All of the this is from the first issue. Uh, as you you can you see uh, the language is slightly different. Old English, uh, but you can still comprehend uh, about whale fishing in North Atlantic the effects of North whale fishing, etc. Uh, yeah, the, these articles are available on the web if you are interested. If you are interested on how those years are passed with the science, what people were talking about, they are available for studying and reading, for enjoyment. In one, for example, article, they think about piping in the house, how to pipe rainwater properly. So it's an article. Okay. In those years, there are also some mistakes. Today we know that it is not true, but those mistakes are published with different views. And there are also other issues like slavery uh, and other social things which may look incorrect today. This is our journal, Turkish journal, 1862 uh, in Turkey. Uh, its name is Mejmuay Finun. Two weeks ago, I obtained all the issues of Mejmao Funun, if you are interested. Uh, it is in old Turkish, of course, but you can you can read it. Um, after it, with interruptions, it can it could continue until 1883 and closed due to political reasons. Uh, after first 33 issues, there was a cholera outbreak in Istanbul that interrupted. Uh, publication stopped for 16 years due to the political climate and the Munif Pasha's condition. Then after then after three years, no, after one issue. It was closed and never opened until I think until 1910s after second measure there was a uh, there was a job. Um, it is a Actually, there are, there are the differences about 200 years. Um, the reason I am so giving importance to writing and write written scientific knowledge is the principle of writing, making things clear. If you write, you get a good view. Writing plus drawing pictures. If it is, if it is a containing, if it is containing uh, spatial relations, positional relations, then drawing is also very good. Not only writing, but drawing too together. Without documentation, knowledge disappears, uh, and for analysis, it is. A must. So in your all homeworks, in your exam questions, don't assume that we already know what you have in your brain. Please explain. Please explain clearly. Please write clearly so that we can understand what you are doing. Unfortunately, I have seen that in the museum in France, 
we can only learn the shape of the Ottoman ships from foreign paintings because they didn't have plans. They propagated the designs by apprenticeship from Usta to Chirak, Usta to Chirak, and then when the last Usta died, all the designs disappeared. There is no written documentation. So written documentation is essential for scientific advancement and technological advancement. So this is a brief tour. Uh, I am going to move slowly then after. And last year we were watching films. Uh, since last year was the first year of this course, uh, some films were, I thought later, too easy for you. So maybe this year I will find a little bit more complicated and challenging videos uh, for you to watch together. Most people regard uh, 16th and 17th century as the beginning of scientific revolution. Scientific, there are scientific revolutions, but uh, most people think about Renaissance. It has some roots going back to China, going back to Islamic world, going back to Greece, all one another. Uh, but the, the conditions in Europe was good enough uh, so that it emerged, not because they are Europeans or certain blood type, but because the conditions were good, it emerged in those regions, social conditions. <clears throat> Um, American Revolution, French Revolution, Chemical Revolution, Freudian, Russian, Quantum Revolution. A lot of revolutions are taught uh, depending on biological revolution, biotechnology revolution, uh, robotics revolution, etc. So whatever you are in, you look the world from that direction. depends on who you read and who you are. One important, one important book is Age of Illumination. Uh, name is Age of Reason. Uh, I will also provide that. Uh, it's available in PDF on the internet. It's free because the book is now almost 300 years old, so it's free of copyright. Uh, it's not a big book, but uh, that reading that book is very nice. Also, uh, books of uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Voltaire, those guys are very really interesting guys. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> Studies, uh, history of science, uh, examines the change in the knowledge, how it was, how it is, how it changed. At the beginning, for example, in the old days, people thought there were good blood and bad blood in the body, and bad blood uh, causes sicknesses so in order to defy defy sicknesses alleviate sicknesses you need to take the bad blood out so bloodletting was done since the early egyptians they because they believe that bad blood is the cause of the sicknesses they don't know the internal workings of the body and they take the blood out, expecting that people will heal. In very few 
except very few cases such as high blood pressure or I think high blood sugar. It is deadly. For example, a deadly or not beneficial. Uh, for example, George Washington, who was George Washington? American president. American Turkey. Uh, George Washington died because of bloodletting. He was sick. He was also a victim of changing in this media. Çiçek hastalığı. Small pox. Anyway. Çiçek hastası diye şey. Yüzüne kelime falan. Anyway, he, he, he got sick after that. He got sick, regular fever, etc. He asked for bloodletting uh, for six hours. And they took 40% or 50% of the blood in the body of his and then died as he was the president. Uh, so that was the norm in those days. Today it's not. Uh, some other people like Plato, uh, algebra to zoology, classification and taxonomy was famous for among those. people in the science. One of them is Plato, for example, want to, to explain things and explain the nature, etc. So the classification and taxonomies are came up. Furthermore, what we do today is the, is the history of tomorrow. It is interesting. Uh, people who were living 1000 years ago, about Ibn Sina times, right? We were believing that they were like you guys talking Turkish, etc. Some Arabic, maybe, Farsi. Uh, they believe that we are at the end of the world, etc. And uh, what are we going to do, right? Uh, see, thousand years past, world is still existing. Technology changed. Those became history. And from thousand years from now on, we will be history. Right? And since the accumulation of knowledge is very well, this information will be preserved. So in the future, it can be studied. As we study Ibn Sina times and all those, all those books in those years, some certain things might change. So it is changing. In the old days, Aristo, Aristo mantığı derler ya, düz. In the old days, nature thought to be consisting of four things. One, air, fire, second fire, water and earth. Cem Yılmaz'ın hangi filminde bir şey? Tahta, tahta da var, değil mi? Doğru. Dördü neydi onların? Hava, su. Tahta. Tahta. Hava, su, tahtaydı değil mi? Üç tane. Tahta. Ateş. Ateş. <gülüyor> so he has a point actually. Uh, in the Aristo times, in the old Greek times, uh, air, fire, earth and water. In between, fire and hot. Fire and air means hot, air and water means moist, earth and water means cold, free fire and earth means dry. So everything is made up of this. The word, what today what we say, topraktan geldik, toprağa gidiyoruz, might be related to this from distance. So earth is very important 
element of explaining in Earth means toprak, so not the planet. Uh, Earth uh, is very important part as element in explaining nature in the older science. <coughs> They also explain upper atmosphere. Uh, there are worlds on top of you and they surround you with similar elements. So it is geocentric world. You are at the center and everything is around everything around you are uh, made up of these four basic elements. They don't know about atomic structure. They don't know about other elements. What they see is only four elements. There are uh, worlds around us. Uh, there is world. Details I don't know, so I am putting these images, but don't think that I am expert on these topics. I'm trying to learn. It is much more interesting than computer science, actually. But uh, I mean, it, it's endless, so when I retire, I, keep, I will keep reading. Uh, these are the, they were aware of the fact that Mars, Saturn, etc. Mercury, so they know that they are, but they believe that Earth was at the center and they were rotating around us. Could they change? We bought a telescope with the friend. Uh, adjust the telescope. And the star stays about 10 seconds, then it moves. It's very difficult because Earth rotates. But the beginning that they say, since they are moving, what they say, they are moving. So they, they think they rotate around Earth. <clears throat> Earth, water, air, fire. That was the... Uh, this was the old picture. Fire, air, no, yeah, fire, air, water, earth. So similar to that. That's what uh, universe is about. Those, uh, the famous Hippocrates, I forgot where he was, in Milas or Ephesus, no. Somewhere in Anatolia, Western Anatolia. Hippocrates uh, was <clears throat> studying uh, human. So we call him as the father of doctors because it was very early, very, very early. Uh, it, he studied the relationship between health and lifestyle under the uh, uh, under the control of the environment. So he said, Hippocrates said, uh, the thing I said earlier, a few minutes ago, there is blood, there is blood, there is yellow blood, there is phlegm or something, and there is black blood. Black blood is the sicknesses, yellow blood is something else, don't know details. So he, he corresponded the Aristotle elements to the human body because it was so strong in those years, four things. So he transferred that theory to human body and explained human body's workings with these different things and 
whenever one of them is greater than the other, human body balance is changed. So they try to reduce the other one. So the first medicine came out. Then, <clears throat> Copernic. Copernic said, no. We are not at the center. Sun is at the center. It's very different. And uh, outrageous for that time. Nobody cared that much until Galileo. Galileo was studied Copernic's documents. But Koper Copernic was also uh, having problems with the church because church was saying that this was the thing, no one can change it. There are layers of uh, universe around us and we are at the center. They insist that it is written on the Bible. So everything about rotating Earth and the ro Earth rotating around the Sun was against Bible at that time. But Copernic was not uh, political, so his uh, effect was not that great, although he had problems. Uh, was, uh, Vesalius in 1564 studied human body and wrote a book. That book was uh, taught in universities and so-called universities uh, around Europe Ye years after that uh, on the fabric of human body, that book. So pictures were like this in the, from the book. Um, so they studied, they started dissecting human body. In the early days, uh, human body was sacred. So those kind of dissections, today still is, those kind of dissections, cutting and ex experimenting was uh, considered as a sin. So nobody could work on human body properly, except some few genius people uh, in hidden places. So uh, human body knowledge was not accumulated that fast in those years because it was separate. Uh, in 1628, this was, for example, uh, circulation of the blood, how to stop blood and blood circulation stops, so blood has some effect. That's what they thought about in those years. <clears throat> they thought about uh, why it is circulating and the heart is pumping, etc. Heart. Francis Bacon, the great philosopher and thinker and scientific knowledge, a scientific person, and usually rich people. They have money so that they can think, just like all the Greeks. Uh, natural philosopher, government official, Lord Chancellor, uh, etc. A lot of uh, things. Uh, he invented compass, today's type of compass, gunpowder, printing. A lot of things. Uh, he has writings about nature and effect on uh, French Revolution. Magnetism was studied, explained, not used. First use was by Chinese, of course, years before, but explanation was done around 1600 uh, by William Gilbert. And the Earth is a magnet, then magnet aligns itself. But the question of why magnet pulls each other is a different question. It is a very difficult question. 
again, Richard Feynman, the guy I talked about, has a video in the on the web. His, he has a talk, long talk, conversation uh, before he dies, before he dies from cancer in 1989. The part of the questions was why two magnets pull each other. The answer was very interesting. And you should also watch the Why has the Earth a magnetic field? Because there is an iron inside. And that iron rotates due to rotation. Its internal magnetic internal electron orbits align to the same position, etc. So interesting. I am not that kind of expert, but that is related with the rotation. For example, Mars doesn't have it. Since Mars, Mars doesn't have it, Mars doesn't have ionosphere. Since that doesn't have ionosphere, oxygen cannot stay. Since oxygen cannot stay, harmful radiation comes in and then separate oxygen to different atoms and those atoms fly away to space so that uh, Mars cannot hold uh, oxygen in gas form. It can only hold oxygen in frozen form in water. <clears throat> Galileo was following Copernicus as a uh, telescope. Actually, he didn't invent the telescope, he improved it. He heard that there was a device to make things closer in Netherlands. He was in Italy and he went to Netherlands to learn how to make that with the mirrors, etc. with the lens. Uh, he came back and made his own, made his own, uh, thought about that. He had experiments with the gravity too, and he became in conflict with the church a lot because he was he was in Italy as well. Uh, this was a comic. Galileo explains his discovery to the Pope in those years. <clears throat> so. Uh, he was banned from doing research. He was banned from writing more. He was jailed, then released, then house arrested, etc. But again, uh, his students later uh, inevitably uh, propagated the knowledge, and also his foundations about earth rotating etc around the sun started series of revolutions in the church in the vatican they changed how they explain the bible about the nature so it also started certain reforms in religious structure Along with, uh, along with Luther in social forms. Luther's, for example, Luther's first thing uh, was to translate Bible to German. When they when he translated Bible to German, everybody could read it and understood. So, church didn't like it because church was trying to control the population by their translation. After he had conflict with the church, church also changed itself. There was no, there was no marriage institution before Luther in Western society. Luther uh, marriage was. Marriage was sin. No, marriage is only sin for the priests. 
No, it was. Now it is like that. In the early times, it was sin. Making children, etc., making sex was sin. Okay, uh, so it was ignored. It was ignored. It was legalized and institutionalized by Luther, and then uh, that marriage ceremony is in the church, etc. Then after that, as a response, Vatican also invented uh, marriage ceremonies, etc. Before that, it wasn't. You can check Wikipedia. <clears throat> Descartes was also an important guy. We are approaching to 1600. No? Father of modern philosophy, uh, Descartes. Cartesian coordinates. Cartesian coordinates in this guy's cards. Same card. Cartesian. Descartes Cartesian coordinates invented. Descartes was an interesting guy. He was working in, at home. Uh, so different uh, analytic geometry mathematics and also philosophy uh, that influenced renaissance and french revolution a lot and in the, of course then industrial revolution and social revolution he said cogito ergo sum i think therefore i am düşünüyorum öyleyse varım kendisi <coughs> He rejected religious authority in the quest for scientific and philosophical knowledge. He was also Catholic, but he rejected religious authority in science. <coughs> in science. <coughs> he argued that rational for justification for a universal mathematic quantitative understanding of nature. So there must be a rational understanding of nature. And he tried to solve it. He didn't accept. He didn't accept the answers. He rather tried to explain. Uh, today, we are in Cartesian view of the universe. Although people say there is there is quantum quantum world, etc. But for the amplified case, for mechanical size, since our bodies are big. Cartesian world is still correct, three dimension. Um, Descartes and other philosophers established space for coexistence between science and religion. It will still be quite some time after them before Europe will be able to embrace an evolution in that direction. That means Descartes and some other uh, people thought about how science is related with religion in those years, 1600s, but until 1800s, the 17, 1750s, 1780s, 100 more years, 100 more years, it's, not, it's big. It's big. Uh, people only can uh, free themselves from uh, the relationship, the tight relationship between science and religion. It, it is even worse in uh, Christianity than Islamic religion. Uh, I think we can uh, stop at this point. And if you have questions and things that you can tell, uh, please free, feel free to tell me or tell others so that we can enjoy this class. Thank you. Um, can you be sharing the slides? With yes, slides will be on Teams web page. Please, everybody, uh, subscribe to Teams. Is there anything about attendance? Yes. I mean, if you want to come for attendance list, come, write your name and go. Arkadaşlar teşekkür ederim.